Hey, Madison, what's up? Hey, Dr. John. Um, well, I um, separated from my husband last week. Oh, man, what happened? Um, I. It's really hard to explain because I don't really understand it. Um, we've been married a couple of years, um, but through our whole relationship, over time, he just, like we started having like intimacy problems and the distance between us just grew and I couldn't, I still don't really understand why. Um, but when you say intimacy problems, like was it a sexless marriage or he was making you uncomfortable? Like what was the, get, give me some of the roots of that intimacy. Um, it, it, when we first got together, he was a very, um, he pursued me sexually. He was okay. the pursuer. Um, and then after three months, about three, three to maybe six months, that kind of like slowed down a little bit. And I, th I interpreted that as kind of like more performance issues or maybe low testosterone. Mm -hmm. And he was never from, he's a very quiet man. Um, so from my perspective, I felt like he, he was never seemed as motivated as I would expect to try to find a solution. It just, it just didn't fit any of the typical boxes of what I would expect. So and he, he kind of went for it the first couple of months y'all were married and then it, it didn't play out like he wanted and he just quit and you were expecting him to like, dude's going to want to fix that. And he's just like, I'm good. I'll play video games. Yes. Yes. Huh. And, and just over time, it just would be a, three months between the times we'd have sex and I would try to talk about it and we would have conversations where I would feel like we would be on the same page and then things got, it just never, I, I can't even explain, it just never got better. It just kept getting worse. And so um, did y'all ever see anybody? We did go to couples counseling um, and then he started going to counseling separately. I, I, this, I ended up, I just think there's, there's something wrong here that I don't understand that is making, what did your, what did your couples counselor say? He wasn't great. <laughs> to be honest, he, he was trying to be very encouraging. Um, and John just, my husband, um, just, didn't want to deal with the problem. He didn't, I felt like I was doing all the carrying uh, and trying to solve this. And it felt like he would have a conversation with me, but wasn't motivated, I guess. Okay. Um, so then he, he saw his therapist for, um, he's, he's seen her weekly for probably about, gosh, probably like four months now. Um, but about six weeks ago, but I wasn't hearing anything about what was happening. And I was asking and I wasn't really getting anything. And about six weeks ago, I just was like, hey, I, I don't know what's happening, but I can't keep doing this. I'm exhausted. And you have to give me hope. That was the conversation I had. Is you Give me something from your therapy. Give me hope. And he... um went and saw a therapist the next week and she said he has something called um, like avoidant, uh, no, dismissive avoidant attachment. Avoidant attachment, good God. And, <laughs> all right. Oh, geez. So, I mean, so, so that made, I Googled that <laughs> and that made sense in a way of, it does, the the closer I felt like we got, the further away he got from me. But hold like on a second. Hold on a second. All up. all attachment disorders, or they're not disorders. All attachment, right. um, avoidant attachment, anxious attachment, all those things. And I've talked to Adam Lane Smith, who's like the attachment goat, right? And I may even have him on the show one day. Like he's he know, all they are is your body's way of responding to tough relational situations, especially when you're young. It creates a roadmap. Mm -hmm. And they are not 
personality disorders. They're not neurological disorders. They're just, they're, it's biochemistry. It's the way your body learns to handle a problem. And what that means is your body can learn another way to do it, right? They're right. adaptive is the nerd word. They're adaptive, which means your body can adapt to something else. You have to want to. This isn't, it, your husband's not stamped in stone. Right. It sounds like, and this is hard to say, it sounds like he doesn't want to be married to you. Yeah. I, I, I have realized. Does he have the courage to say that? No, he sure doesn't. What a coward. Why? Why is he putting you through that? He, I almost have this cognitive dissonance of this, this version of him that I adore and I look at as someone who has things that are hard for him. We all and, do. Hold on. We all have right. things that are hard for us. Right. And then there's the version where I finally have to look at the sum of his actions. Right. Behavior's a language. Say, yeah. Yeah. I, I have, like, I have ADD. I got I diagnosed as an adult. I really view a lot of things as conquerable. As you come up with a system. Yes. And, Good for you. You know, you, you, you can change your life. So I've <laughs> you been know what that makes you? To, a functioning adult. Good on you. <laughs> Good on you. Good on, I mean, that's, that's awesome. That's good for you. It, it, it's been so confusing to me to feel like in my heart, I have all this compassion for him. And in my head, I have all this frustration with him. Let me clear the confusion up, okay? And I'll, 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 I don't know if you're asking for that, so tell me to stop if you don't want me to. Um, the confusion, I think, lies here. You love this guy and you want to be married to him and you haven't come to terms with, you haven't chosen reality. He does not want to be married to you. And I think there's a huge, and I'm, I'm saying that that directly because I care about you. There's got to be an yeah. exhale at the end of that sentence. Oh crap. You're right. Because you've sought professional help on multiple different, different in different places. And the proper response to a dismissive avoidant attachment style is, well, that's not going to do in a marriage. Right. Let's go, let's, let's go figure this thing out. Awesome. There is a ton of resources out there. Not, well, sir. sweet. Now I've got an excuse. So I don't have to be with this person. And then by <laughs> the way, th the way... And I use the word coward intentionally. The way cowards who won't just tell the truth and they're watching somebody that they, that loves, they know loves them, just starve to death at the end of a line, just drown with no flotation device. The reason um, I call him cowards is because he's going to make you, you're the one that separated and that makes him self-righteous. My wife left me. Right? He cuts off all the oxygen in the room and then he points his finger at you because you walked out the door so you could breathe. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry that I did that to you. If the, the, the situation I'm in right now is that when we decided to separate, he, the conversation was, I knew I could not, you know, like you said, I had to go get oxygen. And he was going to work with his therapist. And I mean, he's classic, like, like he doesn't like to do hard things. He's not, you know, like I have to push him to get anything. And so he was going to go work with his therapist and we were going to. Why won't he work with you? Why won't he work with you? I get working with a therapist and yada, yada, yada. He's been going to therapy for two years. And I know because, he's not he's not on the phone right now, so I'm 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 asking that question right. to the wind, right? But for everybody right. out here listening to this, at some point your spouse has to look across the table and say, I need this from you. I want this from you. I want you. And you have to decide, oh, I gotta go work on my there, or okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go for it. You see what I'm saying? There's like a tenacity, like I'm gonna go from to hell and back for you. I'm going to run through brick walls. And if I get to a brick wall that I can't go through, we're going to hold hands and we're going to go back and get some, 
some skills with a therapist, and then we're both going to run through this thing again. It's not a matter of you putting things on the table and him being like, I don't know. I think I need to go to my counselor and talk about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I hate to bag That's on him I with want. him on the phone. It pisses me off that I'm, I'm, I'm mad at myself for even this, but it's so pervasive right now in this video game <laughs> culture. And I'm just hearing wife after wife after wife dying on the other end of these relationships. I'm so sorry. God almighty, I'm so sorry. I and I will tell you, Dr. John, I'm not a perfect person, but I've been a really great wife. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, listen, here's where, okay, and you're, uh, I'm so grateful for you because you're like, <laughs> you're, you're laying it out for me. When somebody yeah. really loves their partner, their husband, wife, fiance, girlfriend, whatever you want to say, they really love them. And that person plays cat and mouse with their heart, with their soul. What that person does, because you're a person of character, you're a person of integrity, and you're a person who said, I made a covenant to be with you for the end of time. You end up going to the mirror all day going, what's wrong with me? What's wrong with me? What's wrong with me? What's wrong with me? Yeah. And I'm telling you right now, nothing. Are you perfect? No. Do you have some crazy in you? Of course you do. We all do. <laughs> Are there some things you need to work on? Of course, we all do. Me, I'm in the first. I'm the front of that line. But are you the reason this marriage is falling underwater? No. So how do I? The the moment I'm at right now is through his own. It's his own fault, and I know it. You know, he has he does not have strong friendships with the friends in his life. He's alone. Um, logically, I know that's not my responsibility. And I know that right now, so right now he's, he's trying to reconnect, you know, and I've only been out of the house a week and a half. And he didn't care about that three weeks ago when he insisted on selling our house. But now he cares because he's lonely. And, and logically, I know that. And the other part of me is I'm trying to decide where to, I don't know how to, where to put up my boundaries in case, because I've told him he, at this point of where I'm at, he needs to go figure out how to be a grown up man. And if he can figure out how to be a grown up man, he can come back and talk to me about, and, and when he can come tell me what he did wrong, <laughs> you know? Uh, well, so the whole, the whole thing it. has been cast into a parent child relationship. Let's get out of that. Absolutely. You're not his mom. Absolutely. Okay. You're right. What, what, instead of focusing on what he needs to be out there doing, I want you to focus on here's what I'm worth. Here's what I need. And I want to give you some freedom. He has not been a person of fidelity in his marriage. Okay. Okay. He's violated his marriage covenant with you. Did he go sleep with somebody? No. Did he violate his covenant to you? Yes. And so you have said, I'm stepping out of this situation. I'm going out where I can breathe. Good for you. Very important when you take this step is here's a date and a time that we're going to get back together and communicate. And we're not going to communicate until then. Otherwise. But how long? How long do you think that should be? You know, it, when it's when it's about someone's uh, being verbally abusive or they've created an unsafe environment, I think 30 days is good. I think you're at a 30-day place. Okay. And let him know. We're going to meet in this restaurant at this time, and I'll pick up the check. That's kind of a – it's kind of a like a passive-aggressive flex, but I like it. But it's letting him know I'm in, char I'm in charge of me now. Yeah. And when you say, I need you to come back and be a grown man, I need, you need to be really clear about what that looks like. You need to have a job. You need to be contributing a full-time job or, and, or you need to be back in school full-time. Mm -hmm. You need to show some sort of medical or psychological intervention on your <sighs> sexual dysfunction. And I'm not blaming. I'm just saying, hey, that needs to be 
That needs to be priority number one. How are we coming back together here? Yeah. Because he's choosing shame and he's choosing, uh, and he's choosing to hide from a challenge. He, he acts, he, when we went to couples therapy, he, um, he thought that like buying me flowers more should mean that I, I, there was no longer an expectation that we have sex in our marriage. Yeah. Like there's not a, there's a break with reality or, or yes, there's something very wrong. I, I think that what you just said is exactly right. He has not lived in reality. I would love to talk to him about how he grew up, but my guess is the whole world did everything for him. Yeah. And what he did was he married a, a, another mother. And that's not, I mean, that's the least erotic thing in the world, right? Yeah. And so I think it's you being very clear about Here's the life I'm going to lead moving forward. The marriage y'all had is over. He can pursue you like the hounds of hell and chase you down and let you, let, let you experience, not through running his mouth, let you experience. I get it now. I got a long way to go, but I am going to learn how to be the man and husband that you deserve period. And by the way, that starts with me looking across the table and looking you dead in the eye and letting you know, I want you, I desire you. And I'm going to figure this thing out. Is yeah. ED real? Of course it's real. The people who deal with that. Of course they do, but you go figure it out. You go meet with whoever you need. So what, what do I do? You if, say, I'm, gonna, I'm not responding to you anymore until this date at this time. Yeah. Well, what happens if we do that? We get there. Then you ask, how are we doing? If, he's, if, he, if, he, uh, if he, if he, if he, I'm, a, I'm afraid that he'll half-ass it. I'm, I'm, I could almost guarantee you he will because he's never faced a consequence in his life. Right. And what he's choosing is, I'm choosing... To not work more than I'm choosing her. And that's Mm. all the info you need. Yeah. And is that info going to break your heart? God, yes. Is that info going to be devastating? Yes. But that info is going to be true. Yeah. And if you've ever, if you listen to the show, I want nothing more than reconciliation in every marriage possible. And I think 99% of the time it's possible. Do I want y'all to stay together and have an awesome marriage and this thing? Of course I do. But I don't want you to carry the entire wagon train through the mud, always asking yourself, why aren't you working hard enough? And this whole thing drags into the Mm -hmm. ground and it collapses. Because he's going to hop off the wagon train and just go find another mother. And you're going to be stuck in the mud like millions and millions of other women. I'm just done with it. And I have some, like, some sympathy because he's been told his whole life, let mommy clear the plate for you. Men are the problem with everything. You just sit there and I'll pat you on the head. And so I feel bad because he's been poisoned. His mind's been poisoned as to thinking what masculinity looks like, what his responsibilities as a husband looks like, how to go get a job and get off the video games, all that crap, you know what I mean? But he's got to learn that. And unfortunately, some people don't learn that until they're married and there's some serious, serious consequences. Like he runs into a Madison who's an amazing woman and an amazing wife who says, I'm worth more than this, I'm not doing this. But brass tacks, I would be specific, I'm blocking your number. I'm not going to answer your text and your calls for 30 days. You've been apart for a week, so okay, for 21 more days. We're going to meet at this restaurant at this time. Here's my expectations. If you haven't met those expectations, I'm going to unblock your number an hour before. Just text me, and we're going to skip the lunch. If you don't have a job, if you're not, I mean, and by the way, I'm not talking about a career at this point. That will come, but like you got to have a job. If you're not enrolled in school, or you don't have the application process cooking, if you don't have fill in the blank, a doctor, I don't want to say a doctor's note, but you are not sitting in doctor office and psychologist's office and trying to figure stuff out. Or here's the other thing. He can also be a person of character 
not and nope, he won't be a person of character, he'll be a person of integrity. He can look you in the eye and say, I'm not attracted to you, I don't want to be married to you. That will pull your soul out because you want this thing to work, and I applaud that. But at least he would tell you the truth. And I want you to communicate in whatever way you need to. You are in control. And here's what you expect. And then if he comes in, he's got a he's got a job, he's got all the stuff, all the things that you lay out, great. Then he has earned back the right to start dating his wife again. This isn't we all move back into the same big half. Whoa! No. Now he gets to show you how he's going to pursue you. And you're not going to be spiteful. You're not his mom. You're going to continue to be an awesome wife, but he gets to pursue you. And you're going to build something new with him. By the way, he gets to put on the table. Here's what he needs. Cool. That's fine. Hmm. This is tough. I'm sorry, sweetheart. I'm sorry. Let me know how that meeting goes in a few weeks. I would love to hear how it goes. Hang on the line. I'm going to send you a copy of Building a Non-Anxious Life and Own Your Past, Change Your Future. Just my gift to you. Both those books, I think, would help you in particular as you kind of walk through this fog here. Don't give up. But also be super clear about what you want and what you need.